Hey, sports card collectors and investors. I hope everybody is having a great Monday, great start to the week. Um, finished up the last dance last night. What did you guys think of it? Um, I mean, there was parts that I really did like. I like the, the Pacers series. I remember that being an absolute battle uh, for the Bulls. And I remember, you know, it being kind of one of those deals where it was, is this the end of the dynasty? I remember thinking of that, thinking that as a kid. Uh, so that was kind of fun to, to relive it. Um, so yeah, with, with this video, I wanted to go over kind of where Bulls cards are uh, compared to where they were, you know, for some of them before the documentary started uh, and just kind of see if prices went, went higher uh, yesterday or if they started to come back down to earth or, um, you know, what, kind of what that trend is looking like. And it could just be too soon to, to gauge it now, um, but I thought I would take a quick look and I wanted to document my research and, and so I'll go ahead and, and jump right into it. So. Um, the first card that, that popped up that surprised me, but well, it surprised me at the, at the value of it because I had not looked into it before last night. And it was Steve Kerr's 89 Hoops rookie card. Um, and this is a card where this wasn't even on my radar. It should be, though. I don't know why I didn't really think of it. But um, in a PSA 10 back in March, these were 48 bucks. Um, 48, 50 bucks is, are the sales that, that I'm seeing. And then in May, of course, with the documentary, um, they're anywhere from $120 to $180. So, I mean, they've pretty much tripled in the last couple of months. Um, there are only 141 PSA 10s out there, uh, which isn't, a, it's not super shocking. I mean, this is kind of one of those things where scarcity matters, but at the same time, there's loads and loads of raw Steve Kerr cards, 89 hoops, rookie cards. And so this is more of a function of people not sending them in to get graded because they didn't feel like it was worth it, um, or they just didn't think they would get a ten. I feel like if you got a, if you got a nine, you know, then it's just not. It probably wasn't worth your time or your money. You would have to really kind of hit that ten, uh, so you'd have to feel really confident in it. Um, and so you know, but who knows? I mean, you know, that that's something where you know, I'm sure there's a bunch of people that that jumped on that a few months ago, kind of leading up to the documentary. Some, some people were smart and got ahead of that game, but it'll be really interesting to see what those cards look like moving forward, if those Steve Kerr rookie cards are gonna hold up. I mean, he's still relevant as coach of the Warriors, so it's not like you know he's just nowhere on the map anymore um, and, and nobody you know sees him or, you know, I mean, heck, if he, I'd be curious to see if he wins another championship with the Warriors, how that would affect his rookie card, if at all. Um, so that just because he's a coach and you know, I don't know. I mean, it'd be it'd be really kind of interesting uh, to see how that pans out. So Steve Kerr rookies, it looks like they got as high as about 180. And then I believe that there was some recently that were in that 120 to 140 range in the last couple of days. Um, so, you know, we'll see where that goes. We'll continue to track it. I'll probably do a follow up video in another month or so, maybe another two months just to give it some time for the dust to settle on the, do on the documentary and see where these all are. Next up, I've got uh, Dennis Rodman's rookie card. This is one I talked about uh, last week or the week before. There was a recent sale at $1,069. It looks like we're still kind of in the same spot with these um, to where I think there was some sales that looked at like they were, there was a couple of $1,600 sales. I don't know if those were just outliers or, or, what, or what the story was um, on those, but it does look like that card is consistently at a PSA 10, right at about a thousand bucks in that 950 to 1,050 dollar range. So that'll be an interesting one to follow, you know, just to see, you know, what what ends up happening with it. Next up, I've got Michael Jordan's 86 Flair rookie card and a PSA 10. This was more of I was just doing research and this it, it popped up on my feed. There's there's an auction, and this is probably the same auction that everybody else is following, but there's one day and 10 hours left on the auction, and it currently sits at $84,200, which I believe uh, we saw in the news recently that one sold at like 95 or 96,000, and that's the, the current high. So of course, we're all watching this, this auction to see if that one's gonna eclipse that, that 95, 96K mark. I mean, you have to assume it's gonna get close, if not beat it. Uh, so it'll be, that'll be interesting to follow. So I threw this one on the list just because I thought it would be cool for everyone. If you didn't, if you weren't aware of this auction, um, you know, go ahead and check it out, follow it, save it, you know, so you can get notification when, when it sells. 
All right, and next I've got uh, my MJ's right-hand man, Scotty Pippen, his 88 Fleer rookie card. This one went as high, it looks like, as about $2,100, $2,200 on May, like May 5th to May 7th. It looks like there were some pretty high sales. Recently, uh, though, it looks like it's come back down to earth. Now, I, I believe this is only one or two sales I saw right in that $1,600 range. So I don't know if that's a function of the prices are coming down or if that's just a one-off sale that happened to go at $1,600. This is another card I want to watch, too, to just see how is this one going to hold up you know, in a couple of months after the fervor from the documentary dies down a little bit. Because um, Scotty, he was one of those guys, he had a huge role in the documentary. I mean, they really you know, talked him up a lot. I mean, he was one of the, other than Michael Jordan, he was the one that they talked about the most, uh, and for good reason. Um, yeah, he's a Hall of Fame player. He doesn't really get as much credit as, as, as we probably should give him, um, you know, in those six titles. Um, so his rookie card is one I feel like long term. That's, uh, I'm not as high on Dennis Rodman, even though Rodman's also a Hall of Famer. And of course, he's just a, got a huge personality. And so there's going to be a following for him. But I'm just not as high on his PSA 10 rookie cards. I feel like a year from now, you'll be able to get Rodman rookies at a good, at a good price. Um, or good is relative, but you know, at a lower price that, than where they are now. Um, and, and maybe even closer to what they were three, four months back. I could be wrong on that, but that's just kind of my feeling. Whereas with Scottie Pippen rookie cards, I think that they actually have the opportunity to hold up over time, but we'll see. I'm gonna do another follow-up video on this probably in a month or so, like I said, and we'll see what happens with those. Now, outside of Bulls players, um, I wanted to also take a look at um, the, their, one of their main nemesis, Reggie Miller. Uh, this is not a Bulls card, obviously. He was with the Pacers, but the Pacers were so close to beating the Bulls. It's kind of like the Jazz. The Bulls and the, I mean, the Pacers and the Jazz were right in the mix there. Um, you know, towards the end of the 90s to where they should have been able to overtake the Bulls. And for whatever reason, MJ just got the best of them, the MJ and the group. Um, but I was looking at Reggie Miller rookies um, and they, they went as, they were as low back in early April, $599 to $640. For PSA 10s, there's only 147 out there currently. Um, and then, but yesterday there was a sale at $1,199 for a PSA 10 Reggie Miller 88 Fleer rookie. So another guy where he's obviously getting a big boost from the doc, um, but I, I'm just curious to see again. I mean, he's he's a fantastic player. I mean, he's a, he's a you know, all-time player, top 100 player for sure. Reggie Miller uh, was a beast. Uh, but again, curious to see. I mean, you saw it. It was half that price back in early April. That's six weeks ago, five weeks ago, six weeks. So, I mean, this thing, it could just be the documentary. But for, for all these cards, I just want to see that. That'll be really interesting to see, you know, one month, two months, three months out from now, how these cards are holding up. And I think that will really kind of show some staying power you know, if they're able to stay at those prices or even stay close to those prices, I think would be amazing just because I think that those, I mean, historically, those are high prices for those cards, the highest, I would assume. Um, you know, so it'll be really interesting to see. But, you know, I, I was kind of sad to see the documentary end last night. I felt like there was just more to, more of the story to tell. It kind of like, you know, felt like Game of Thrones or something, you know, to where it's like, you know what, there's still, I feel, I, I still feel like there's pieces of the puzzle pieces of the storylines that we didn't get enough on um, that I would have liked to, you know, delve into more. Um, for example, I know they kind of, they kind of glossed over, you know, Gary Payton and the Sonics, um, you know, and Sean Kemp. Um, they, they did spend a lot of time on the, on the Pistons, the bad boys, uh, which was, which was great. And they were obviously their arch rival leading up to the Bulls starting to win championships. So I, I understand why they covered them a lot. Um, they did cover the Pacers last night, which which I was happy about. The Knicks, you know, they they covered the Knicks, but also I wish they kind of I wish there was more um, more uh, information on on you know John Starks and Hewing and Xavier McDaniel because they used to have epic battles uh, with the Bulls. So while I love the documentary, I, you know, part of me is like, did I love the documentary because there's no sports and I'm desperate? Uh, or do I love the documentary because it was a fantastic documentary? I think it was a mix of the two because, you know, obviously I'm, I'm dying for sports, but then at the same time, you know, it, it was really well done. It was footage that we haven't seen. It did give a glimpse into sides of things where 
I didn't understand it as a kid or it wasn't even on my radar as a kid. Now as an adult, I appreciate it that much more. So, um, you know, really interesting documentary. I'm sad to see that, that it's ending. I'm not as excited about, you know, the Lance Armstrong, um, you know, the, the Mark McGuire, uh, Sammy Sosa stuff. That, that was an exciting time. But again, it's like steroid era baseball. So I, I don't know. And then, I mean, the Bruce Lee documentary coming out is probably the one that's most interesting to me. But, you know, I hope they do keep coming out with those documentaries, at least, you know, good ones that are that are well done. So anyway, thank you guys for joining. Um, again, just wanted to kind of go over these Bulls cards and see where they were and, and how they moved. Uh, with last night being the, the last night of the documentary. And I'll follow up on those because I'm curious to see in 30 days. I'll probably do like a 30, 60, 90 day follow up on these cards just because I am interested in seeing where they go. And I think that'll, that'll, that'll be telling as far as the hobby goes if they're able to have some, some staying power and some hold at, at those prices. So anyway, thanks again for joining, guys. I hope you're having a great Monday and I will talk to you later.